Grease monkey. Two words I never thought I would use at the same time. But luckily, this concerns neither one of those things. Grease monkey is actually a very powerful browser add-on. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and use it today. Warning, some programming knowledge required. But I'll try to make this as smooth of a journey as I possibly can. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome to another Random Wednesday episode. So today, we're going to look at Grease Monkey. Now, if you're using Firefox, that's what you should search for and install. If you're using Chrome, I think the plugin is called Tampa Monkey instead. I don't think it is made by the same people, but I really have no idea. Anyway, the point of Grease Monkey is to actually inject JavaScript into a web page. This JavaScript is something you have written, and what that means is that gives you a lot of power because you can change up how a web page works. Personally, I've used it a lot for formatting things, you know, making columns wider or moving things around on a page. So that is what I'll be guiding you towards today. As mentioned, you will need some programming knowledge to do this. In fact, here's a very quick rundown of what you will be working with. First of all, we'll be interacting with HTML. HTML is used to, you know, specify what appears on screen, text, images, tables, things like that. We'll be working with CSS. CSS is what determines what everything on screen looks like. So yeah, you can think of it as a styles and formatting kind of tool. And of course, we will be working with JavaScript, and that is the scripting language that will perform all the heavy lifting. JavaScript is really the only language in which you will do programming in. Both HTML and CSS are just there to specify stuff. While you will need to know a little bit about these technologies, I will try to guide you along. Every time I talk about something that you know might not be very clear to a beginner, I'll try to put help text around. If you still have any queries, of course, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. So here's a little workflow of how we're going to do our stuff. Basically, first of all, we will be looking at a page itself and identifying the things we want to change. This may not be very easy because we'll have to poke into the code, the HTML that actually defines where everything is and sort of pinpoints the elements we want to change. Then I'll show you some JavaScript that you can use to pinpoint these objects and to change them up. Once we have all of this knowledge, we can then move on to Grease Monkey and actually put them all together in our Grease Monkey script, which then allows the script you have written to run every time a particular page is loaded. As mentioned, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be targeting individual elements and changing them up. Obviously, Grease Monkey can do a lot more than that because Grease Monkey can do whatever JavaScript can do, but we'll confine ourselves to doing one thing today. I think this will serve as a good fundamental for you to move on to doing other things as you decide. So yeah, with that said, let us jump into our experiments and we'll take everything I mentioned just now from the top. So let us begin by learning how to identify elements in a web page. So what we have here is a very simple sample web page that I've written and we're going to basically use this as the staging ground for everything we do. Obviously web pages out there aren't going to be as simple, but I think learning on a more simple site is probably more helpful than, you know, just jumping into a more complex site. So basically what we have on this page are several sections. In order to understand which part of the code actually creates all this, we can actually use an inspection function available within your browser. So in order to take a look at say this segment over here, what we can do is we can simply right click it and click on inspect element. This will pop up some kind of diagnostic tool that is built into your browser. In fact, it shows you the entire HTML code of the page and if you hover your mouse over various parts of the code, you can actually see it highlighting different parts of the web page. So yeah, what we've just tried to look at is this div over here. Divs are one of the most common types of objects you will see on a web page. And basically a div is simply an area in a web page. So it is just a block containing some items. So yeah, basically this is the div of this title here. 
If you want to look at the entire section, all we have to do is to look upwards. So yeah, you can actually see these arrows here. For example, if I mouse over this part, that of course selects the entire div on the right side, but I can pop it open and look at its constituents. So this is the div containing the title. And if I would mouse over this line here, that specifies the button. So yeah, basically that's how you actually find things on a web page. By using the inspect element tool, you can find the area of code that actually creates that element. So now that we are able to identify elements within a web page, it is time to actually pinpoint them. Now, we're going to start with, say, this div over here. Now, this div makes it very convenient for us because it actually has an ID. An ID, of course, is a unique identifier of this div. To show you what I mean by pinpointing it, we're going to actually jump over to the JavaScript console. But before we do that, let us take note that the ID of this div is left. So over here in a console, basically what we can do is we can address this. To do this, we say document dot get element by ID and simply specify the ID. So this statement, if run on its own, will actually return to us this div. In fact, if you mouse over it, you can see that that is the exact div we want. Of course, having that there allows us to change things up. So for example, I can actually address this element and let's change up its contents. So let's say dot in the HTML equals to hello. And there you go. Basically, we have changed up the contents of this div and now it says something completely different. So yeah, essentially this gives us a feel of, in fact, what we're going to do for the rest of this episode. We can actually pinpoint items and then change up their contents. So let's refresh this page to get the original content back and let's try to address a different section. Let's go back to the inspector and let's now try and address this section in the middle. Now, there is some difficulty in doing this because this section does not have an ID. However, after some finagling around, you can still address this by its class. We'll go into greater detail about classes later on, but suffice to say a class is what you use to actually give formatting to objects. That is not the only way you can do that, but it is one of the ways. And what you find is in web pages out there, a lot of the times they don't have IDs, they only have classes. So to do this, we go back to the console once again, and we say document dot get elements by class name. As you can see, the autocomplete has specified this for me. Now, notice that previously when we say get element by ID, it was singular. Whereas in this case, if we are going by class name, it is not singular. And the reason for this is because multiple objects in a page can be of the same class. So yeah, take note of that. Anyway, basically we specify section here because that is the class name of these elements. And if we were to hit enter now, what we get here is an array. In fact, all these three divs are of the class section. And that is why, well, we have an array of three items. Now, before we continue, let us try to hammer in the idea a little bit more. Basically, you notice all these titles actually are of the class title. So if I were to go to the console and basically do the exact same thing here, but now I specify title instead. Take a look at what happens. The items returned are now the three titles. Basically, this doesn't help us pinpoint individual items. Instead, we're going to have to delve into the array itself and pick out an individual item. So let's go back to this command call, the first one we've done earlier, by looking for elements that are of class section. Basically, what we can do is we can address it like we normally address an array in a programming language. Let's say we say one now. And what we get back is a diff we want to change up. So yeah, like I said, this is just an array. You can address it like you normally would with any old array to pick out the individual items. So yeah, if you want to change things up like we did just now, we can always go look for everything with the class section, pick out item number one in there, and then say dot in the HTML and change it to whatever you like, like so. 
So let us take a little bit of a breather by going through a summary of what we have just seen. And basically, we can break them down into two categories, that is finding things and changing them up. So let's first go through again the methods of finding things. Ideally, you'll want to use get element by ID. And the reason for that is because IDs are unique. So this will allow you to pinpoint the exact item you want, and you can carry on with the rest of the logic. Of course, an ID isn't always available. And when that is the case, you may have to use the class name instead. This isn't the best solution because, well, class names are not unique and that is why this function actually returns an array. You'll actually have to use the index to pinpoint the exact item you want. Of course, that may also not work because the item you want to look for may not have a class. If that is the case, you'll have to use getElementsByTagName instead. Now, this will be quite a horrible thing to do because there may be many elements with the same tag name, so you're gonna have to crawl through all of them to find the one you're looking for. So yeah, this would be a last resort. So that's basically it for finding things. What about changing them? We looked at several ways of changing up items on a web page. The first of which is inner HTML. And that basically changes up the contents of containers. To change up the contents of all of these elements, you want to use inner HTML. If you want to change up something like a button or a text field, Instead of using inner HTML, you're going to have to use value. Now, there is one more thing you can change, and that is what we will be moving into next. And that is the style of an element. So alright, let's talk about styles. Basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just give you a very quick crash course of CSS. And well, basically, what you need to know is what styles are. Styles are just formatting that is done using CSS. Their syntax looks something like this. Basically, well, they come in pairs like this. For example, you want to change up the background color of an element. So you just say background dash color, give it a colon and specify the new color. Now, another thing you need to know in CSS is how we can actually associate these styles with the individual elements. There are several ways you can do that. You can actually set all of the same type of tag to have the same style. You can also target an individual element either by its ID or by injecting the CSS directly into the element. Or you could use a class, which is something we've seen before. Classes are a way for us to group elements together. When we have a particular class, we give it a particular style, and everything that has that class will inherit that particular style. So yeah, with this knowledge in mind, let us actually jump in to modifying the CSS using GreaseMonkey. So for example, I can say document.getElementById and I pick out the section on the left. So I say left and then I can say dot style. I can then assign say its background color and I can set it to say red. So that gives us the color code F00. And there you go, I've just changed the CSS of this particular item. So yeah, CSS in and of itself can do a lot of things. In fact, let us get rid of this red because it kind of hurts the eyes. So yeah, as I was saying, CSS can do a lot of things, you know, other than change colors. We can also change font size or font type. And more importantly, some of the more useful things I've found is to actually change up the width of various divs as well as to hide them entirely. So what we're going to do is, let's say we want to hide this section here, and we want to make this wider. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we must, of course, be able to target this div. So let's say get elements by class name with the class name section, and then we can target the div in the center here. And in this case, we want to change its style. So we say dot style to display and change it to none. There you go. So that has gone and it doesn't take up any more space. In fact, the div on the right has now jumped over to take its place. Now let's go ahead and make this wider. So once again, we do a very similar thing. Documents dot get elements by class name section. And well, this is the section with the index too. So yeah, 
even though the one in the center has disappeared, this doesn't shift. This is still index 2. Then we set its style, and let's say its width, and let's change that to, say, 700 pixels. And there you go, you've just made a div wider using injected JavaScript. So yeah, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do, but as you can see, what we've just done is we've changed up some values and we've changed up some CSS. So that's all well and good, but none of this has anything to do with Grease Monkey just yet. The idea of using the console as we've just seen here is to let us have a bit of a hands-on to know what we need to change and how we want to change it. Once you're done with that, you want to actually build that into a Grease Monkey script. So go ahead and go to Grease Monkey and say new user script. This allows you to do some things like name your script and more importantly, this here basically says which web pages you want your script to run on. That of course depends entirely on you, but as you can see, the page that shows up here by default is the page in which you have loaded up. So yeah, this is generally what you want the vast majority of the time, but change it up if you need to. So let's give this a name here very quickly. And once we click OK, we are actually sent to a window in which we can begin to modify our script. So yeah, basically on this page, you would do all the things that you have just done. So let's quickly put together some code to change the color of the leftmost section, hide the middle section, and enlarge the rightmost one, like we've done before. So on the site, with the script disabled, we see the original content of the page. However, watch as I enable the script and refresh the page. Voila, our changes have been applied. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a Grease Monkey script. Of course, what we've done today is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more to writing Grease Monkey scripts. For example, in certain contexts, you may have some issues with timing. This can get pretty involved, which is why I'm not covering it in this particular tutorial. Plus, this video has run long enough already. Take what you have here as a starting point and explore further from there. And there you go. In fact, what we've learned today was 99% JavaScript and 1% Grease Monkey, but that shouldn't be a bad thing. After all, Grease Monkey is basically a JavaScript utility, so yeah, naturally all you need are JavaScript skills. Of course, this gives you the added advantage if you want to do web programming, these skills are applicable as well. As mentioned, this is just one thing you can do with Grease Monkey. You can really do anything JavaScript can do. So if you'd like to explore further, by all means, look at JavaScript tutorials and try to see what else you can do. But yeah, that's all there is for this episode. I hope you learned something today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.